Hey friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher, and I am back on Saturday the 9th for a new cross stitch video. This is episode number 67. Right on cue. I've got him trained. <laughs> hope y'all are doing well, and I hope you're having some beautiful weather and fully into spring. I did see some people are getting snow. I'm sorry, I, when I lived in the Midwest, I hated snow in April. That just seemed just wrong. <laughs> but anyway, I'm sure it'll get better as time goes on. It usually does. So so what have I been stitching on? This is going to be the weekend of Carol because we finally just released the um, quilting video that uh, my husband's been working on for days to do all the editing. And I couldn't even watch it when it uploaded because as he was working, <laughs> working on it. I kept hearing my voice and hearing my voice and hearing my voice because he was doing the editing and Camille, our six-year-old granddaughter, spent the weekend last weekend and I told her, I said, if I still hear my voice in the morning, I'm going to be screaming. She said, no. I'm like, yeah, I'll be screaming. <laughs> anyway, what have I been working on? So, um, in the last two weeks after my last video, I just... I had kind of put out a call if anybody had done Ann Rayner. I had some parts of it I didn't like the colors. And a couple people did um, give me a heads up of what they were using and it was the conversion to NPI silks. So I completely um, revamped and pulled the silks in the needlepoint silk. And they're, they're close to the DMCs, but um, a li little, little darker. And so I did work on it. I had this row finished last time and it was kind of a bright orange, this band right here. I took that out completely and redid it and I'm much happier with it. I went all the way around with the red portion of the flowers. And then I started filling in some of the alphabet and some of the edges of the flowers. So I'm really liking the colors. The only thing I'm not changing, I'm staying with the same green that I used for the outer border, and I'm staying with the same red. And those are um, the red is Belle Soie by Classic Color Works, Sister Scarlet. And the green that I'm using is Gloriana Lemon Time, T-H-Y-M-E. So those are the colors I'm using in the NPI silks and I'm much, much happier. I just feel settled about it now. I'm doing this on 40, it actually me measures 42. So I think it's 40 that just is a little bit tighter. Um, and it's Buttercream by Lakeside Linen. So it has a little tiny bit of yellowy or creamy buttery flavor to it. This is the chart. It is no longer available. Mine is already promised. You can see how on the chart that one band, mine is much closer to how it looks now. To the chart. Maybe, maybe, maybe um, McKenna will at some point re, you know, get the rights to this and re-release it. We can only hope. There's been some that she has released, um, like ES Spot Sampler by Of Female Worth. That was a long sought after chart and a lot of people's unicorn, and so now you can get that one. So maybe at some point Ann Rayner will be. Um, available. Mine is already promised. I'm glad the pa person is patient and willing to wait because it'll be a while before I finish that. So I worked on that for a few days. I was anxious to get the parts taken out that I wanted to take out and restitched. So now I feel like I'm fresh on it with um, new colors and everything. Um, I'm trying to keep things together here. The next thing I pulled out, somehow for me, when market releases come out, then I'm always anxious to
to look back at things that I either have whips or that maybe I purchased last year at market that I haven't even started and kind of, in, you know, incorporate those into some of my stitching. So one of the things I had that was a whip is this one by Plum Street. It's called A Thousand Hills. The verse says, the fowls above, the Lord doth know, the earth with wonder he fills, the beasts of the field, the beast of the florist belong to him. Uh, the florist, <laughs> yeah, you know, the flowers. <laughs> the beast of the forest belong to him and the cattle on a thousand hills. I love this. It does have some over one stitching on the verse and some of the little blackbirds have over one. So it's also not gonna be a, a quick stitch, even though it's not very big, it's 156 by 194, what I would kind of call a medium. And this one I'm stitching on a uh, 40 count winter brew by r and r And you know, r and r fabrics are sometimes hard to get if you call Dying to Stitch, which is a brick and mortar in Virginia Beach, they can usually let you know when when they will be dying um, whatever particular color and count. If they don't have it, they can usually give you a heads up when, when it might be available. So what I got done on this, I stitched all the way down on this vine, added a couple flowers, and then I started working on the leaves of this big tree. It has seven leaves. I have six of them outlined, so I need to outline the next one and then fill it in. I was having a little bit of a challenge because um, the outline of those leaves and the center is done with pea pod by um, 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 Cla uh, Crescent, Classic Color Works. Used to be Crescent Colors. So one of the older ones I had, had a lot more yellow in it. And one of the newer, no, that's backwards. Yes, the older one had yellow, the newer one is more green. Although they look the same there, but they really aren't. And then on the inside part of that leaf, is avocado and avocado has a lot of yellow. So I wanted a little bit of a contrast. See some of those on that and that would not contrast. So I did order another pea pod just to see and I, I hope I get one that's more green and less yellow because I like that contrast on those leaves. So I'm enjoying this and I'm kind of glad that I'm getting back to it because it is a whip. You can see what I'm referring to now when you see the center of those leaves versus the kind of the area around the center. I love the colors. It's really pretty. So I'm anxious to get back to that one. Um, the next thing I picked up that I did a little bit on was um, this one. It's called Needle and Thread. It's by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And it's called Needle and Thread. Try to hold it up long enough so everybody can see it. Has this girl with the big hip skirt. And she has some a tomato pin cushion on the side of her skirt. She has some uh, spools. And then in her basket, she has more spools and another um, pin cushion. So this again was a whip. And the struggle I had on this, okay, so the dress is done with uh, caramel corn by Gentle Art. And caramel corn can have a lot of different shades. Some people have said that's if it's at the bottom of the dye pot versus at the top of the dye pot. I, I don't dye threads or linen, nor do I ever plan to. Um, so I'm not sure about that. But in order to have some contrast with the bodice of the dress, see the bodice, I've got the sleeve there. 
And that is calls for, hold on here just a second and I will tell you, light khaki. So by weeks. And a couple of the light khaki I have have a little bit more gray and the other one's more cream. Now to me, you could go either way and it would show up more than anything that just matches the fabric, which by the way, this is 36 count mellow by picture this plus. I tried other colors for that bodice and I just wasn't sure. So the only part of it that you really see, you know, part of it is her arms on the dress. The other is the top of the sleeves. Oops. They're like a leg of mutton sleeve. sleeve with the puffy top. I may backstitch around that because on the neckline, you know, you can see because of the flesh color. So the only part that's kind of hard to see, but then on the other hand, obviously you can tell. So I, I'm kind of stalled on this one. I may just go ahead and finish it. And then I could always use the skirt color to, to do just a, small little backstitch. So at least the bodice would show up. I don't want it to look like she has a head on top of a skirt. <laughs> that would be dumb. And so that's 36 count mellow and I'm using the called for um, over dyed. The only thing is there's two Valdani's. Uh, Brenda used to, Brenda Gervais used to design a lot with Valdani's. So I have them, so I'm using them. I haven't had any problem with them, so. Anyway, so I worked on that just a teeny bit from where I was in the past. And then, uh, what else did I work on? Oh, one, one night, just for an hour or so, I pulled out my Lucy Calcott by just stitching along. I love this. This has a lot of stitching. There's a lot on the border. So this is one I just need to pick up periodically. So you see the, there's these little baskets that are orange. And then there's quite a bit of orange in this. Like the outline of this is orange, or this one I guess is orange. The baskets, the outline of this motif here. So there's quite a bit of orange. And I'm using a Verisoi silks. So here's the orange. It's, it's a pretty strong color, but the whole thing has quite a bit of bright, bright colors. So it does blend. So here's where I am. I stop mid stitch sometimes, do half of a leg and, okay, I gotta go to bed. This one I'm doing on, um, let's see what it calls for. Light exemplar and that's what I'm doing it on. This is where I am on this one. It's kind of, it's longer than it is wide. And it's definitely um, gonna be a beautiful size when it's finished. So these are the little baskets I worked on. And I will get back to this in the next two weeks because I really want this one finished. I'm also working on the little flowers and the um, stems that go all the way around. So I have two sides of the stems done, part of the flowers done. So there's a lot of work yet to be done on this. Oh, I also built that tree with the branches. Can you see that? I can't see what you're seeing. So it's ready to have some flowers added. There's a lot of color changes on this, you know, like a flower might have two or three colors. So it's kind of a lot of little fussy stitching. And then, because everybody else is doing Dutch beauty, not everybody, but I have gone back and forth about the color of linen that I wanna use for Dutch beauty. This is Dutch Beauty. Susan Stanley's working on it. Um, there's quite a few people that are working on it. And 
somebody on Instagram, her name is Brenda Holzman, and she showed her progress. I think she's kind of up in this area. So I asked her, I said, what linen are you using? And she said she was using uh, buttercream, which is the same one that I'm using, the same color that I'm using for Ann Rayner. Well, I have a big piece of buttercream and it's done, this whole thing is done in DMCs. The DMCs are pretty neutrals. There's a, there's a few brighter ones, but for the most part, I think I've shown this before. You know, you have a little bit of a brighter gold, some greens, of course this pink, pinkish red. That's DMC, that's all DMC. So if you get a tan linen and you're stitching all this tan, it's not gonna show up. So I was really concerned to get the correct color of linen. And when she said she was using buttercream, I knew I had a big piece of it. So literally, I sat down for 10 minutes and started. This isn't a start, okay? Those of you who look at these kind of things and go, that's not a start. You're right, it's not a start. It's, it's a getting ready to get going. <laughs> So that's where I am. This is actually the side, I think. Wait a minute. Yeah, this is the top. So I just did a little tiny bit and I'm happy with the color so far. So this is what I'm gonna be stitching Dutch Beauty on. And it will take a full fat half because it's a large girl. I think the count, uh, stitch count is, uh, blah, 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 blah. 630 by 390. It's it's a long-term project. Which is good. Got to have those two. Okay. Um I have a couple other things I'm not sure what to show you next. Hold on here. Then I did a couple other things that I have a couple little tiny finishes, so I'll show you those in a second. I wanted to kind of continue on the spring theme. Am I on a spring theme? I don't know. I wanted to show you one that I finished last year that I have not fully finished. And this is Ah Tis Spring by Not Forgotten Farm. And I need to just get a frame for it because it's really too big for a stand up. See, this is my hand, so it's, it's pretty big. Ah, to spring. I didn't get the pattern out, but it's by Not Forgotten Farm. She has her own website. I'm sure you can download it. There's the bunny for spring, and then there's the, um, there's something that's another season. I don't know if it's fall, if it's a pumpkin head or something, but very similar. I haven't done it. But this is Ah, to spring by Not Forgotten Farm. And I did change, it called for DMC. I did change the dress to a variegated, maybe mountain mist, I don't really remember, but something that showed up a variegation. Autis Spring by Not Forgotten Farm. And then, um, obviously it's April 8th, 9th, today's the 9th. So I need to take down my March wordplay and I have the April one finished, but I have never liked the way I finished it. So I am going to take all of this off. This is the April wordplay by With Thy Needle and Thread. Why I picked these colors, I have no idea. It just looks dumb. I guess I was trying to pull out the blue in here. I don't know what my deal is. It's glued, so I'm gonna have to I can struggle a little bit, but I can get it off and then replace it with another. <coughs> Maybe I can get it off. I might have to cut it off. I think it'll come off. It's good, Eileen's glue is good. <laughs> I got a little section off, so I think it'll come off. But I am definitely gonna replace this corded trim that I made with DMC. I hate the colors. I always have. I don't I don't know why I did that. I could cut this off and just put a different one in front of it. I don't know. 
It's just dumb looking. Um, most of the colors are pretty, um, pretty muted, even though it's spring. So what I probably will do is pick something like this little orange or this, or even the color of the bee skip, something different than what I picked the first time. So anyway, that's April wordplay. I need to hurry up and change it because we're a third of the way through April almost. So the next one that's kind of bunny-ish that I pulled out that I've shown before that I want to do. Wait, what did I do with the picture? Here it is. Is Spring Fling by With Thy Needle and Thread. Now I've pulled the fabric, which is in the pink by um, by R and R, and it's a very pale pink. Well, the instructions tell you to take a some red wine and dunk it in the red wine. I did that. Mine came out kind of lavenderish, but maybe that's okay. I mean, that's kind of a springish color. It's kind of a pinkish lavender. I think it's okay. Here's the colors of the floss. Now, I don't have the white because I'm just going to use probably DMC. But these are the other colors. So there's a light pink. Cold. So there's the colors, and I, I think all of them are gonna show up, even this light pink. So I definitely think a white, it's gonna show up. So I may just go ahead and use it. It's 36 count in the pink by r and dipped in wine to get it a little bit more of a reddish. Obviously use a red wine. <laughs> I had a bottle in the refrigerator. I don't know why I didn't throw it out earlier. It's from Christmas. <laughs> there was like this much left. I'm like, seriously? <laughs> I guess I don't drink wine as much as people think I do. <laughs> anyway, the next one that I would like to do, I found this. This is called Scattered. It's by Scattered Seed Samplers. It's called Humble Gatherings. Just adorable little bunny with a basket. Cute border. I love the key. She does keys a lot on her designs. By Scattered Seed Samplers. Humble Gatherings. This was part of the Humble Hair Handwork Series. Um, it's charted for DMC. I just have a scrap. Of something something, so it's not gonna be very big. And then the DMCs, I've just pulled them. So anyway, I don't know if I'll get to that. If I do that spring fling bunny, <laughs> I'll be stitching that bunny forever because that's a lot of full coverage. But anyway, I think it's cute. It could definitely be on my radar. Now, once May hits, I'm gonna want to stitch patriotic. So if I'm gonna do anything, I gotta, I gotta get going. And speaking of bunnies, that brings up the whole subject. <laughs> of my bunnies I want to sell. I was overwhelmed, even before I had a chance to put on Instagram to sell them, with the amount of people that wanted to buy a bunny. So here's what I'm doing. I am looking at all of the comments. I'm gonna do the random generator picker, and I will, I had a dozen, and I will um, keep one myself. So uh, there'll be 11. They're gonna be $29, and that includes the shipping, because shipping for most people with a box, is gonna be somewhere between nine and $10. So I will contact you via either your comment or via Instagram and let you know you won the opportunity to buy a bunny. I was kind of overwhelmed with that, so anyway. And hopefully you'll still want it. I'll try to get them out this week. I'm gonna do that random thing later today. The other one that I have on my radar, and there are quite a few people that are either in the midst of stitching this one or have finished it, and I love it. I think it is so, so cute. 
Brenda just never disappoints. And I'm so excited because I get to see her again at the um, June Stitch Camp at Country Sampler. But another one that I love is the Rabbit in the Rose. This was a new release with Thy Needle and Thread, Brenda Gervais. The Rabbit in the Rose. She uses Whisper Fabric or Whisper Floss, which is like kind of mohairish, I guess. And then she kind of fluffs it so that it makes the tail kind of three dimensional. So it calls for a seraphim fabric called Time Goes By, which is spelled T H Y M E. I don't have any of that. And the picture, now it has the word time, so I'm assuming it has a greenish cast. So I am going to use, and here's the D, it calls for DMCs. This is probably the one I will start the soonest. Um, I'm using Color and Cotton Boardwalk, which again is kind of a grayish with a kind of greenish flavor to it. I could probably also use Legacy by Picture This Plus, but all of these colors seem to show up nice. Even this one, I think, won't. It won't fade away, hopefully. And like I said, they're all DMC. So I may be starting this one even today, who knows? Just very spring colors and I love that. I love this design. Oops. Rabbit in the Rose by Brenda Gervais. The other new one from Market that I really am anxious to start is by Plum Street. That is, this is the day. This is also a new release. And I have this one kitted. And again, this one has some kind of bright colors. But if you're gonna do bright colors, spring is the time, right? A lot of them are DMC. There's a few, uh, there's two weeks and some classic color works. I think it's nice. A lot of these designers are adding DMC conversion, which hasn't always been the case. A lot, a lot of designers have, but with threads being hard to get, I think it's nice. So that this is the pattern. This is the day. And I'm going to be stitching that on the called for Barb's Blend, which is a light, light gray, almost a silvery kind of color. So that is something also that I may start very, very soon. Oh, please, while I put this back in the package so they don't get mixed up. The last one that I'm gonna show you that I, other than some couple samplers, but that I really wanna stitch. Lofty Goals is Spring Salt Boxes. I think I showed this last time. This is by Plum Street. These are made to look like photographs. You know, it used to be when you would take a photograph, you'd have this big white margin around the edge of the photograph, and it was always a bigger margin margin at the bottom. Spring, spring salt boxes. I'd love to do both. I don't know if I'll get both finished. And for that, I pulled a piece of, um, Oaken by Picture This Plus, which is what it calls for. And I did not have the white for the edge. So I pulled the B5200 by DMC, uh, that's DMC, which is the, the um, alternate. I think it calls for Snowball by Classic Color Works, and I didn't have that. So here's the colors. 
obviously they're not all on the same because the two have different kind of color paths. But what I'm going to do is I am just going to do a small margin on the bottom that matches the sides. I just, I just don't feel like it needs all of that. It may not even need the white. So that's why I wasn't worried about getting the white because I may not even use the white. I may just do them as is and make them into like little smalls. So lots on the radar. I told my husband, this isn't gonna be a long one. I hope it isn't. Poor guy is like, I thought he was gonna leave home. <laughs> All the editing he did on my quilt one. So here's a couple others. I'm not gonna take these out of the package, but here's a couple others that I, samplers I'd like to do. This is by Chessie and Me. Oops, I guess I have to take it out of the package because there's such a glare. It's called the Martha Davies, whoops, 1830 sampler. Here's a picture of the antique that was in the pattern. I love that. I think it does have, usually um, Linda Lottenschlager from Chessie and Me. I should pronounce her name. Anyway, um, she usually does include some specialty stitches. So I'm expecting there will be some specialty stitches in this one too. This kind of goes along with those spring colors, I thought. Very pretty. Martha Davies. 1830 sampler by Chessie and me. And then I was going through those scattered seed when I found that bunny one and I pulled this out. I know a lot of people have done this one. It's that same style with the alphabets at the top and the motifs at the bottom. This one is by scattered seed. And this one is called the um, Catherine Dickinson 1840. It's not huge. Um, let's see. This is worked on ale, which I, I have it kitted with ale and the called for threads. Um, stitch count. I don't see a stitch count. It says on 32 count, it's eight and a half by a little over eight. Oh, 135 by 131, so it's almost square. I really like that. So that may be at some point. And I like the ale linen, it's darker. And then this is the new Rejoice Evermore by Brenda with a needle and thread. And I kitted this one up with the called for antique lace by Seraphim. I had a couple pieces of antique lace and some of them were a little different than others. But this is the one I think looks most true to the color. And these are the flosses. I haven't put them on a ring. There's some DMC, there's some um, gentle art, and there's some um, weeks. I have to be able to see that red. That's so pretty. And that teal. It's really pretty. I think this is a beautiful sample. She, her market releases were just fabulous. So it's Rejoice. Rejoice Evermore by Brenda Gervais with the needle and thread. I love the way these birds kind of angle around the house. This would be a beautiful drum, just right in here. Very pretty. I always have lots on my radar. I always have plenty to do. Um, the other one that I pulled out came out last year and this is one I saw when I watched Brenda and Laura's video. 
And Brenda has this one almost finished. This is Caroline Amelia Trowel, also by Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. If you wanna see it nearly finished, she's probably finished by now because it's been a week. You might wanna go watch Brenda and Laura's last video. It's beautiful. And this one I have kitted with also the antique lace, but it's just a little bit different. It's a little, has a little bit more of a green cast. Would also be pretty on needle and flax dirty teacup. Um, would be really pretty. And I have that one kitted with the called for flosses. The next thing I wanted to show you, now I can't remember where the white went. Oh yeah, this is summer, spring salt boxes. The last thing I wanted to show you, and this may take a little bit, but this is gonna be a fast parade, okay? Y'all like parades, right? So I got the book, Keeper of the Pins by Brenda Gervais. I have this one finished. And then I have um, the ABC one finished. I'll show them in just a second. And I'm working on this one. And I'll definitely finish that one today. Faye Rigsby showed hers. She has them all finished in a little dough bowl type thing. They're just adorable. So I'm doing them on Country Mocha, which is what it calls for. So I have the first one, the alphabet with the tomato. I have that finished. And I have this one with the thimble, or the um, spool of thread with the tomatoes on top. This is on 36 count Country Mocha by Zweigart. Vintage Country Mocha. And then I'm working on this guy. I have the bird finished. It's interesting because on the bird's wing, I think I'm gonna sneeze. Excuse me. <coughs> I never sneeze once. Never. Minimum two, sometimes five. A little trivia in just in case you wanted to know. <laughs> you can put that on my gravestone. She never sneezed once. <laughs> Always twice. So it's a little bit hard to see. You use Mountain Mist by Gentle Art for the bird. And the wing both the portion of the wing up here and this part of the wing, you actually stitch with two strands. The rest of the bird is stitched with one strand. So you have a little bit darker effect on the wing. It's hard to see unless you get really up close. It's like it kind of loses. And my mountain mist was one that had a lot of lighter colors. I think if I had just saved all the dark colors and use two strands for that, for the wing, it would show up a little bit better. I am gonna to try to do all of them because I think they're so cute. So I have the, um, they have a little bit of this kind of grayish rickrack, which I bought from Brenda, so I have that. If I don't have enough of the gray, I also have a tealy colored one because there's also, Let's see, the girl over here. She has the tealy colored dress. So I think I could use the teal on that one and this one. And then the, I don't know, I still may run out of rickrack, but. So for the backing for these little smalls, I was at the quilt shop the other day and found this fabric. I got a fat quarter I also got enough to have my friend make me a bag. So I got a red for the inside. This is Riley Blake fabric. I don't know who's the designer, but I know it's Riley Blake because part of the um, selvage has the name. So this is gonna be the inside of the bag. She makes beautiful bags, uh, project bags. And then this will be the outside of the bag, but I'm also using this for the back of my keeper of the pins, little things. Cool, huh? 
And then it doesn't take many flosses for this. You could use all DMC, I think it calls for. This one is um, the red for the tomatoes is DMC 22, which is a perfect tomato red. I also got a couple pieces of this fabric also by Riley Blake. And it has a few, well, let's see here. It's, you could definitely fussy cut some of these as the tomatoes, as a sewing machine, readers, just really cute fabric. I don't usually buy novelty prints, but I, these would be great for the back. And then this one has a blue background versus this one has a creamy background. So I could use those on the backs too. So those are all set to go when I get those finished and I can do some finishing, which I am way behind in doing finishing, a lot. So that prompted me to pull out some charts that correspond to stitching. And I always thought it would be so cute to either have a wall in my sewing room, although I don't have any walls left, <laughs> but I thought it would be cute to just frame some of these and they're all stitching related. Obviously, I'm not gonna put them in a dough wool in the kitchen. So I'm gonna real quick show you some of these and then I will let you go. This was a freebie from um, Kitten Stitcher. So I'm just gonna flash it real quick because it is the chart. This was from 2019, it's a pot of flowers and it says stitch. So that's one. Um, this was another freebie that I got with an order from Kitten Stitcher. It's by Marjorie Massey. I don't know if you can still get these or not. It says needles, flash, flash. I'm gonna try not to take these out of the paper. I mean, out of the plastic. This is by Hands On Design. Stitch Over Two, all the day through. The name of it is Stitch Over Two. There's another bunch of tomatoes. Stitch Over Two, all the day through. Scissors, strawberry. This is By The Bay Needle Art. Now there's a lot more than what I'm gonna show you. If you really look, these are just some of the ones I have. I am a needlesmith. By the Bay Needle Art. That's almost full covered, not quite, but almost. But it's just gorgeous. Can you see that? Let me turn it just a hair. By the Bay Needle Art, I am a needlesmith. This is by the good Husswife, Hooswife. I I got this chart years ago when a friend made it for another friend and I was like, oh, I have to have that chart. Hers are pretty hard to find, but it's called With My Needle. It says flowers, plants, and fishes, beasts, birds, flies, bees, Hills, dales, plains, pastures, skies, seas, rivers, trees. There's nothing near at hand or further, furthest sought, but with my needle may be shaped and wrought. So you can stitch any of those kind of things that you want. With my needle is the name of this one. And it's by the good Huswife. It's really cute. My friend has it hanging on her wall. So if there's a glare, I'll take them out. Otherwise I'll try not to have to. This is Kathy Barrick, My Day Complete. By Kathy Barrick. I cannot count my day complete until needle, until needle, thread and fabric meet. I, I love this one. That bird in that tree is just fabulous. 
This is an older Stacy Nash. I actually got this as a kit one time at a like quilt show. Let's see, 2011. This is called Pins, Needles, and Scissors. And each one is a separate. She could have this on her website. She hasn't, is it an Etsy store? I can't remember if it's an Etsy store or just an online, Stacy Nash. I wanna say it's an Etsy store. Pins, needles, scissors, and each one is like a bouquet of flowers. Here's an example closer up of the scissors. So I've had that kitted for a hundred years. Cause I probably got it in about 2011. I told y'all on my quilting video, everybody that says, oh, I'm buying these and saving for retirement. Well, that's what these are. This is another good huswife, hooswife. This is called Ellen Bird's Eye. Ellen Bird's Eye, Birdsy. It says, all of my scattering moments are taken up with my needle. This, I just love these. That would look good on a piece of, um, I'm, I'm going to be getting some 90s, I think, Nirvana by um, Needle and Flax. I ordered some. I'm not in a hurry, Rachel. Don't panic. <laughs> the next one is another Kathy Barrick. Next couple are Kathy Barrick. This one is called Needlework. The scissors with the hanging Full of thread, needlework. You wouldn't even have to put that border on there, but the border is beautiful. It says, my heartfelt thanks to Carol Sims. If you don't follow Carol Sims, you should. Her um, Instagram is Sampler Farm. And it says, parentheses, princess lightning needles. <laughs> Did not know she had that nickname, Princess Lightning Needles. I love that. So that's a Kathy Barrick. And this one you actually can, no, it's a stitch piece. I was gonna say you could put a needle in it, but it almost looks like it has a needle in the spool of thread, but those are just stitches. That's a good place to put your old needles. I usually put my old needles in a used Coke can. <laughs> I got used to doing that with my long arm needles because they're big and I didn't want them in my trash just so I started putting them in a Coke can. But I like the salt paper, salt shaker thing where you have an old antique salt shaker and you put your used needles in, in that. I can't remember, I think Scarlet House, maybe she showed that first. Good Intentions, also by Kathy Barrick. I myself am made entirely of flaws stitched together with good intentions. And that has all the spools, scissors. Very cute. This one is by Hands on Design. This one I have kitted. It goes on a really dark fabric. This is by Hands On Design, Stitch Every Day. You can either do it in a drum or a frame. Very cute. The linen it calls for is Gingerbread by Weeks, I think. No, it's Picture This Plus. I lied. The next one is Little House Needleworks. This would be easy to just stitch up quickly. 
This was a kit because it came with the buttons and everything. And it is called Keeper of the Pins. My Little House Needleworks. Cute. That one calls for, um, what does it say? Oh, 32 count Jobelin by Lamb's World, but I would, I don't think it's stitched over one. There's a couple of, so this one, I don't know where the bag is, but this is Little House Needlework, Needleworker. And I wanted to do this, and I also wanted to do, so that was Needleworker by Little House Needleworks. Home of a Needleworker, also by Little House Needleworks. I just love this theme of stitching and sewing and and that one that's stitched on 28 count but it's 127 by 100 so some of these could be really small if you stitched them on 40 or 46. Home of a Needleworker. I might change that to a red house. Another Little House Needleworks. This is the Needlework ABCs. I know a lot of people have done this one. There's all kinds of these ABCs. There's fall, there's Christmas. Little house needlework. Needlework ABCs. I actually have a frame that would fit this that I bought for something else. Um, it's 39 by 311. But there's a lot of open space there. I love the little girl at the bottom. Needlework ABCs. That came out in 2017. I'm sure some of these are really still available. Here's one I really love. I love them all. Who am I kidding? <laughs> Thread Gathering, also by Little House Needleworks. And the spools say cotton, wool, silk, cotton, wool, silk. Thread gathering. Count on that is 203 by 70. <sighs> I feel like Wheel of Fortune, they say. Um, what do you want to buy? I want to buy some more time. I don't want a vowel. <laughs> I want some more time. <laughs> this is also Little House Needleworks. I saw this one made up in um, the store in Wichita, Heart's Desire. I loved it, so I bought the pattern. Came out in 2012. Have I done it? No. It is called A Stitcher's Heart. Came out 2012 Nashville Market release. Fabric, thread, scissors, needle. Cute. I even bought the fabric for it at um, Arts Desire. Unfortunately, it was 32 count. Then there's Prairie Schooler, <clears throat> the ABCs. This one is Q for quilting. Um, this one is S for sewing. Prairie Schooler. These come three letters per chart. And there's E for embroidery. And then, I don't know why I haven't done this one. A lot of people have done this one. This is by Brenda Gervais, I Collect. I will probably do this one after I do my um, Keeper of the Pins, because that is not a lot of stitching. And I have it kitted. Surprise, surprise. 
the last one, I just, this is a market release and I got the red bowl. I didn't bring it out to show you, but it's a little red bowl. This is by Heart and Hand. It calls for 32, but you can see it sticks out quite a bit beyond the bowl. So I'll probably use 40 or 46. I think I saw that somebody used 46 and it fit perfect. And this one is just called Round Round Red Sampler by Heart and Hand. That's it. That's enough. 59, 55 minutes. Okay. I will um, not be videoing for two weeks. You've seen enough of me. <laughs> Although I was kind of surprised the quilting video was only 47 minutes. I can't even watch. It's like really corny, Carol, really corny. But I'm getting a lot of good reviews, so thank you for watching it. And um, I can't even think of anything my husband has to add to this one. No doorbells, no close-up pictures. I've shown you everything really close. So I hope you all are doing well. I hope you will um, observe Palm Sunday tomorrow, and Easter is the next week. And... Um, the tomb is empty. Anything is possible. So, love ya. Bye. Hey friends, it's Carol, Saltbox Stitcher. I am here for my long promised <laughs> first quilt video. I am in front of a cabinet that is an antique. It was made in the 1880s. It was originally in Colorado and my father-in-law brought it to Jacksonville when they moved here. And after he passed, I have it. It's actually a china cabinet and it's solid oak and even has the original glass on the doors and normally it's closed and I'm in my foyer my front door is right here so um, I'm kind of trapped so if I need to get out I'll have to call 911 anyway I'm glad to be back finally here for my first quilt video I'm going to talk briefly about my quilt history and my quilt journey and then I will talk a little bit about some of the projects I am currently working on so